Hey there, movie buffs. Welcome back to Rocky Watches Movies. Today we're diving into the deep with 1954's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. We've chosen to do this video now to celebrate getting 20,000 subscribers to the channel. So a massive thank you to everyone who clicked on that button. Anyway, let's get on with the video. So put on your diving helmet and let's wade through 20 things you never knew about 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Originally, Walt Disney envisioned 20,000 Leagues as an animated feature. However, after Harper Goff, a Disney artist, presented detailed sketches and championed the idea of making it a live-action film, Disney was convinced to change course. Goff's concept art was so compelling that it shifted the entire production's direction, leading to the creation of Disney's first large-scale live-action film. The film marked a significant change for Disney Studios. It was the first live-action feature film produced in-house by Walt Disney and the first full-length movie released under Disney's own distributor, Buena Vista. Before this, Disney relied on RKO for its film releases. Buena Vista also began handling the re-releases of Disney's earlier films from 1954 onwards. Richard Fleischer, the son of Walt Disney's competitor Max Fleischer, the man behind Popeye and Betty Boop, was hired to direct. When Fleischer questioned Disney about whether he knew who his father was, Disney calmly responded that he did, but believed Richard was the best person for the job. Even Max Fleischer had no objections and was pleased with his son's assignment, acknowledging Disney's decision as a wise one. In his autobiography Ragman's Son, Kirk Douglas revealed that he wasn't entirely satisfied with the original script for his character Ned Land. He thought it lacked the tough physical action scenes that had helped shape his macho on-screen persona. After discussions with both Disney and director Richard Fleischer, an extra scene featuring Ned with two women and a brawl on the streets of San Francisco was added to give his character a more action hero feel. In the film, Ned Land sings the memorable tune A Whale of a Tale, mentioning two women by name, Mermaid Minnie and Typhoon Tessie. These are the same two women who accompany him at the beginning of the film. You can hear him shout their names at one point during the street brawl. In the scene where the Nautilus rams a ship, you can spot animated bubbles used to obscure wires supporting the sinking ship model. This creative solution ensured the practical effects stayed hidden from view. The casting for 20,000 Leagues could have been very different. Gregory Peck auditioned for the role of Captain Nemo, while Charles Boyer was originally considered for the role of Professor Aranax, but had to decline due to scheduling conflicts. Walt Disney also briefly entertained the idea of casting English actor Ralph Richardson as Nemo. Percy Helton, who was billed in the opening credits, had his role almost entirely cut from the film. Helton played a coach driver, but only one brief scene of him remains, where he silently waits for Professor Aranax to finish talking to reporters. The cast had an unusual method to keep Esmeralda the seal happy on set. They carried herring in their pockets. Fleischer later commented that it was particularly amusing to see the refined James Mason fishing around in his pockets for fish after a scene. It also meant the set occasionally smelled like a fish market. If you're enjoying the video, a subscribe to the channel would be as thrilling as a squid battle in a storm. With a budget of over $5 million, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea was a massive production for its time. It was a huge success, grossing over $28 million at the box office. The film also won two Academy Awards, but despite his key role in designing the famous Nautilus submarine, Harper Goff was ineligible for an award because he wasn't part of the art director's union. John Meehan and Emil Curie, who worked on the film, got theirs though. The production was so extensive that Disney had to borrow studio space from Universal International and 20th Century Fox. The San Francisco street scenes were shot on Universal's lot, while the massive tank used for larger models was filmed at 20th Century Fox. During filming of the underwater treasure chest scene, a nurse shark unexpectedly swam into the frame. While the cast and crew tried to shoo it away, the unscripted moment was deemed so exciting that parts of it were included in the final cut of the film. 
Eagle-eyed viewers might notice that the title card in the film's opening credits is missing a comma in 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. The poster and all other promotional materials, however, included the proper punctuation. Initially, the climactic squid battle was filmed against a peaceful sunset backdrop. However, the mechanical gears operating the squid were too visible and it looked fake. Walt Disney visited the set and Fleischer told him about the problem. Disney then came up with the idea of having the squid battle take place during a fierce storm. Another story, though, is that it was actually screenwriter Earl Felton who came up with the idea, but whoever it was who thought of it had their idea become one of the film's most iconic moments. In the scene where Ned and Conse row away from the cannibals, Kirk Douglas comically tips over in the skiff. This was due to the crew removing sandbags meant to weigh down the boat, causing it to sit too high in the water. Director Richard Fleischer found the mishap so funny that he left it in the final cut. Until the late 1960s, Disneyland featured a display that included sets from the Nautilus interior, like the chart room and salon. Visitors could even see an animatronic squid through an observation window. Unfortunately, when the space was needed for a new attraction, many of these iconic sets were destroyed. Captain Nemo's organ was put on display in Disneyland's Tomorrowland in 1955 within a walkthrough attraction. In 1966, the attraction closed and the organ was moved to the Haunted Mansion for the ride's opening in 1969. Replicas were later made for both Walt Disney World and Tokyo Disneyland. This was Disney's first foray into using the Cinemascope process, but there was a catch. At the time, there was only one available Cinemascope lens, which Disney had to rent from 20th Century Fox. This limitation led to a longer production time and Disney wanted the best possible value for the Cinemascope lens rental. During the cannibal chase scene, some actors portraying the cannibals apparently added a cheeky bit of humour by writing phrases on their foreheads. Although not visible on screen, one actor scribbled, Eat at Joe's, while another behind him wrote, I ate Joe. If true, it's a shame it can't be seen in the movie because it is hilarious. Several attempts at remaking 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea have been discussed over the years. MCG once considered directing a version with Will Smith as the lead, while David Fincher was attached to a version starring Brad Pitt. Disney also announced a live-action Captain Nemo film with James Mangold directing. None of these projects materialised, but a prequel series titled Nautilus came out this year, exploring the origins of Captain Nemo. And there you have it, folks. You now know a little bit more about 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. If you enjoyed the video, which I presume you did as you got this far, hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos coming to Rocky Watches Movies. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.